In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Gospel of November the 13th, 2017. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, Things that cause sin will inevitably occur. Would woe to the one through whom they occur. It would be better for him if a millstone were put around his neck and he be thrown into the sea, than for him to cause one of these little ones to sin. Be on your guard. If your brother sins, rebuke him, and if he repents, forgive him. And if he wrongs you seven times in one day and returns to you seven times saying, I am sorry, you should forgive him. And the apostle said to the Lord, Put faith in our hearts. The Lord replied, If you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you would say to this mulberry tree, Be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Gospel of the Lord, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, it is necessary for us to ponder two points. Both of them are very grave and important. The first one is this one. Put faith within us. It doesn't say to increase our faith. It says, put faith in us, simply. That is why the answer of the Lord seems rather radical. If you have faith, at least the size of a mustard seed. The mustard seed is the smallest of all seeds. It's the smallest, it's really tiny. If you have faith, this tiny, you could command a tree to uproot and plant itself on the sea, and it would happen. So thus we know that we do not have faith, neither them nor do we. For faith is not a knowledge, it's not an intellectual addition or adhesion, it's not that I am trying to adhere to some concept because I uh, studied uh, theology and all of a sudden I think that I have faith. By far is not that. Faith is a gift and it's one of those virtues, theological virtue, given by God. Faith, hope and love. Faith is the very beginning of the rela our relationship with God. And as much as it is a virtue that is a strength from God, it requires, absolutely requires, that we accept it, that we don't reject it. Also, that we start living by it. But the second part, which is the part that is most important, is this. The Lord says, it is inevitable that scandal will, will occur. Scandal that produces people to sin. But then he says, Ooh, to the one that produces that scandal. It would be more profitable for him to disappear on the lake with a huge milestone around his neck than to produce that scandal. It would be better for him or her to not have been born. The reason being that his punishment is going to be great. Now, if it had been better for anyone not to live, not to be born, it is because only that his end will be worse than not living at all. That is eternal death. And I can start to imagine all of those sick people in the presbytery that are pedophiles, that abuse minors and, 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 and people they are in this category. It would have been better for them never to be born, for their punishment is going to be terrible. And it's not something to rejoice about, but rather to be very sad, because that justice does not depend on any, anything on the law. It depends solely on the justice of, of God, and it will happen, believe me. Otherwise the Lord would have said, but because God loves you so much and He is so merciful, He will forgive you. No, He will not forgive you. 
especially if you continue to do so. A sin cannot be forgiven if it is continued to be done. But it's not only about us consecrated by the imposition of the hands. It is also about you, all of you brothers, because when you are married and you all go out and have adultery with any other woman or man, you are also provoking scandal and sin on your family and your loved ones. When you become corrupt, when you lie, when you kill, in all of those occasions when you provoke others to be scandalized, you are risking to be severely punished. Let us pray to the other brothers for all of them that might act in this very bad way. Let us pray that we might not fall into that ever, and if we ever fall or have fallen, to be granted the opportunity to repent and be transformed. May the Lord be with you, and the blessing of God Almighty, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, descend on you and remain on you forever.